Hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, thank you for everybody who talked be uh, spoke before me. And it was really interesting to hear um, all the different um, projects and, and the different insights. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to speak about Sonia Labu uh, Tanzi, who wrote uh, La Vie Ademi in 1972. In 2011, uh, the book was translated uh, into Life and a Half, um, and it was introduced to me in a class um, apologetically because of the uh, violent nature of the story. Um, upon reading the novel, I felt that it was no more violent than uh, what colonization had already imposed upon the African continent, specifically in this case, um, the, the, the Congo, where the author comes from. The critical responses to the novel that I later read highlighted Sony's critique of the post-colonial state. However, for me, these responses were desperately lacking because not only had I come to question the post and post-colonial, I had also, um, um, uh, sorry, some, uh, and Steve Biko had also come to mind um, with the, in keeping with the feeling with which I was possessed while reading the story. I felt that in uh, Sonia's depiction of the grotesque, uh, Biko, Biko's words came to life, who in I write what I like explains, wherever colonization is a fact, the indigenous culture begins to rot. And among the ruins, something begins to be born, which is condemned to exist on the margin allowed it by the European culture. <clears throat> Biko urges, we must relate the past to the present and demonstrate an historical evolution of the modern African. I feel that life and a half just uh, does just that, that without shame and without pretense. Um, the, the novel does not offer merely political criticism of the post-colonial nation state, um, but also deeply explores the environmental crisis inextricably um, uh, linked to colonial exploitation of the region's natural resources um, and the local communities. In this manner, <clears throat> the, no the novel uh, does not just relate the past, but also the future in its distor uh, absolute distortion of linear time patterns, or what Mark Bold calls the science fictional future history. On page 133, Sonia describes the imagined country in which the story takes place as a museum of pain where the future history is as absurd as the fact of UN peacekeepers deployed to the Congo only to gain the highest record of child sexual abuse. Or indeed the fact of a Swiss company worth 27 billion dumping raw acid into rivers and exploiting child labor claiming to care about the environment and the local communities. I had a while back come across a picture of um, a Glencore mining site the aforementioned Swiss company floating on London's stock uh, exchange market. The picture seemed to mirror another, which I had seen of a camp for Congolese refugees of climate injustice. Putting the two side by side, this analogy of the Museum of Pain gave greater meaning for me, as the stain on the souls of those profiting from this joint devastation arose in my mind. In the novel, Marshall refuses to die, no matter how hard or how creatively the providential guide uh, tries to be rid of him. When he finally cuts him up and consumes him, feeding the remainder of his flesh and bones to his rag family, they become literally stained by his lingering soul. Though Bolt speculates on the uh, generic identification of the novel, claiming that it deploys all the classical themes of science fiction, from the arrival of, its, uh, of the mutant insects as a new type of violence, which moves from the reign of flesh to the reign of science, in um, what he calls a marvelous universe. Reading the novel as science fiction is problematic for me, because leading Moleno, uh, uh, Moleno's analysis that one finds um, a tropical atemporal Africa as against modernity, typified by the obscene and quotidian appearance of cannibalism, bestiality, atavistic cruelty, and fetishism um, accounted for by magical realism through the first half of the novel. Later, science fiction provides for a historicized Africa anchored in rationality and participating in the movement of modernity, an Africa whose past resolutely leads towards the future. However, later Modelano claims that magical realism perpetuates the image of Africa as a mysterious, morbid, and pathologically sick continent. For me, 
um, the, the marvelous universe of the narrative, which according to Sonny has become the land of bodies and blood, um, is more in line with Afrofuturism, as it imagines the continuity of resistance to colonial violence. The analogy of a land of bodies and blood further echoes Franz Fanon, who in um, Wretched of the Earth writes, in these regions, with the exception of certain spectacular advances, the different countries show the same absence of infrastructure. The mass of people struggle against the same poverty, flounder about making the same gestures with their shrunken bellies outline, and with their shrunken bellies outline what has been called the geography of hunger. It is an underdeveloped world, a world inhuman in its poverty. Confronting this world, the European nations sprawl ostentatiously opulent. This European opulence is literally scandalous, for it has been founded on slavery, it has been nourished with the blood of slaves, and it comes directly from the soil and from the subsoil of that underdeveloped world. The well-being and the progress of Europe has been built up with the sweat and dead bodies of Negroes, Arabs, Indians, and the yellow races. We have decided not to overlook this any longer. When a colonialist um, country, embarrassed by the claims of independence made by a colony, proclaims to the nationalist leader, leaders, if you wish for independence, take it and go back to the Middle Ages. The newly independent people tend to um, acquiesce and to accept the challenge. According to Michael Saratinsky, Marshall represents the undying democratic aspiration of the people when confronted by a brutal and randomly oppressive neo-colonial dictatorship. Life and a half needs no apology. Its violence is the violence of hell, which according to Sonny doesn't kill, it devours. But it is not hell of the divine wrath. It is a man-made hell that corresponds to the death of life, to the death of life. Where under the foreign powers of King Leopold II, 10 million people, up to half the population of, of Congo, are wiped out for profit. All things considered, I wanted to write an essay to argue for the value of Sonny Labutanzi's novel, Life and a Half, in giving feeling to a devastating as to devastating facts that can be detached and incomprehensible from reality within the grasp of the opulent imperial capital that is London from whence I had read about the Congo and from whence I had read the book. Um, I wanted to argue that the genre of Afrofuturism most suited to, um, was most suited to the novel because though grotesque, it feeds fuel to the fires of resistance to the violence of colonial um, modernity. Thank you very much. Um, let's see if there's any questions. No. I can't see if there are any questions. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> I'll I'll wait a while in case questions uh, come. And if I if I read too fast, I'm really sorry. I'm uh, very nervous. So. Okay. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, I I quoted Modeleno who um wrote this 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 um this comment on the French translation, but uh, the comment said that there's very little um, 
and that has changed in the French to the English. Uh, thanks, Jane. <laughs> um, but so the uh, the first half of the novel um, is um, in this in this dictatorship. Um, the, uh, where the, the dictator is gaining power and 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 time is this this thing that doesn't doesn't necessarily exist in the novel it shifts constantly dictators come and go and uh, the resistance is the thing that 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 um that the constant you know the thing that maintains um and so the magical realism element of it in the first half was because of the characters and because of the um and the 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 um the uh, sort of familial bond that made this this resistance and then later on the shift to science fiction was because of the um fact of and this this kind of change happened in 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 the novel that the resistance took more power so um Chaydana, who is or, or Chaydana, but um who is um the 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 initially the daughter of Marshall, who 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 is the resistor to um sorry the one resisting um the providential guide um later has a daughter also called Heidana who then have bears children and so these children they are the ones that gain sort of power in resistance and so their power takes the form of incorporating um science as uh, so one of the brothers, he makes these these mutant flies, which is which was the the thing I, I spoke about. Um, and so this kind of shift made it really difficult to to think about the um, the the genre in which to put the novel. Um, but for me, I struggle with magical realism as it is, but I struggle in um, putting a novel such as this in 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 magical realism because. Afrofuturism is a space that allows for this, um, for for sort of hope for the future. It allows for um, uh, resistance to not just take the form of, of, it's not just discoursing oppression, but it is where the oppression can also imagine its uh, emancipation. Um, sorry. I don't, I don't know if I answered that correctly, Heather, but um, this is, this is really hard. Uh, you know, Hi, Manisha, can you talk a little bit more around how reading the novel in London influenced? Yeah. And um, so I I spoke about this in my in my talk. I, I find I've, I I find it um very unpalatable to to sit in the comfort of London uh, and speak about the colonized. Uh, I am also from a colonized country. I'm a country that is um that is devastated by, uh, sorry from a country that is devastated by war. Um and I I feel that I, so I'm, I'm a performer also, and I feel that when I'm when I'm in in this in the settings in which I'm performing, very often when I when I when I wear my my otherness, you know, like almost as a badge of, uh, as a badge of honor, when I when I uh, perform in Farsi, for instance, when I when I bring in uh, the echoes of war, when I speak of um, the gendered nation and uh, nature of of uh, colonization of of, of Orientalism, um, very often I feel that I I'm to appear with this kind of almost like open wounds you know this bleeding still with the uh, with the with the pain of oppression um and so i i find that i find that very dis uh, very uncomfortable because when you're sitting in a place like this and you speak to 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 people about this there's it, it, there's a lot that gets lost in translation um and then we we move on you know and we carry on with our lives um but for me, what was so important reading so, uh, the novel in London was that the novel made that feeling alive. It 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 didn't just give me these detailed facts of what was going on in the Congo or or for Sony as a diaspora in France. It was it was it 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 it, it was it, like um like a like like it very much embodied learning for me you know it, it was like i read the no novel and i felt his pain i i would then dream about it and i, I could then um maybe words don't suffice and speaking about it also is is is, is a struggle but sonny has this really poetic quality to his writing um which i think helps him a lot 
uh, and there's and that accompanied with a shamelessness um that also means you know you you you, you look beyond pedantics you look beyond the the kind of structure of a no, of a novel to to bring what he is and what he feels to life for me sorry <laughs> did I answer that incorrectly but uh, I realize it can be a bit of a false position between these. Yes. Um. Um. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> very, very good question from uh, from Chase Department. Um. My um, first encounter with Afrofuturism came through gender because my first encounter of Afrofuturism is somebody like uh, Judith, um, sorry, um, sorry, um, Octavia Butler. Um, I, I Actually, it wasn't Octavia Butler herself. I, I read this, somebody gave me these sets of short stories called um, uh, Octavia's Brood. Um, and in these stories, I had come to, to understand Afrofuturism in relation to gender, in relation to kind of this, 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 um, this, this space to, to understand the past in order to understand the, the present, but not to understand the past in order to understand the, 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 the limitations of the present, but to understand the past in order to, 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 to grasp the present, to take you to a, a greater heights in the future. Um, which is what I speak of when I say hope and resistance. Um, so for me, the two are really inseparable. Um, the novel is written by a man, um, but the, the the position of a woman uh, seems very very much understood for me. Um, you know the, the 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 fact of how the fact of how she turns. Like she, there's, there's a really beautiful passage in which Kaidana says uh, she she uses the tool, the Kaidana, the daughter says, uh, I use the tools that bastardy has given me or so, something along, along those lines, which basically means her sexuality. And she's using her sexuality in order to emancipate herself. She says, with this um, sex or with this gender, I shall take the city. Um, this kind of analogy for me is really beautiful because it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't deny her, her her power. It accepts the fact that she is she has been systematically oppressed, but it allows her to 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 use that in order to to gain some kind of some kind of power for herself. Uh, so for me, the two are not really separate. So um... <laughs> answered any of it correct, but this is uh, very hard. Well. Thank you. <clears throat> Bye.